The old house stood at the end of a winding path, nestled between ancient trees that seemed to guard its secrets. Its weathered facade bore the marks of time, the paint faded and the wood worn by years of wind and rain. As I approached, a sense of nostalgia washed over me, a feeling that this house held stories that had been woven into its very walls. The front door creaked open with a hesitant push, revealing a dim interior that seemed frozen in time. The air was heavy with the scent of dust and memories, a blend of forgotten moments and faded dreams. I stepped inside, my footsteps echoing through the silence, and a chill settled over me as if the house itself was watching, waiting. The grand staircase stood as a centerpiece, its balustrade ornate and its steps worn from countless journeys. The walls were adorned with faded portraits and delicate wallpaper that had seen better days. It was as if the house was a tapestry of history, each room a chapter waiting to be explored. I wandered through the rooms, each one revealing a glimpse into a different era. The library held shelves laden with books that seemed untouched by time, their pages yellowed and their spines cracked. The dining room table was set with delicate china, a scene frozen in anticipation of a feast that had never taken place. And then as I entered the parlor, a soft melody filled the air, a faint strain of music that seemed to come from nowhere and everywhere at once. I followed the sound, my curiosity guiding me towards a grand piano that stood in a corner. Its keys were dusty, but the music played on, a haunting melody that seemed to be carried on the whispers of the past. I reached out, my fingers brushing against the keys, and the music faltered, as if the piano had responded to my touch. The melody shifted, becoming bittersweet and melancholic, a reflection of the house's own history. It was as if the piano held the memories of those who had once lived here, their joys and sorrows echoing through the notes. As the last chord faded into silence, a feeling of connection settled over me. It was as if the house itself had invited me in, sharing its stories with a willing listener. The air seemed charged with an energy that transcended time, a bridge between the past and the present. And then, a voice, a whisper that seemed to come from the very walls, carrying words that I couldn't quite make out. I turned, my heart racing, but the room was empty, the shadows dancing in the corners as if laughing at my unease. The voice grew fainter, as if retreating into the depths of the house, leaving me standing there, both intrigued and unnerved. I continued my exploration, moving through the halls and up the stairs, each step a journey deeper into the heart of the house's mysteries. The bedrooms held remnants of lives long gone, a threadbare quilt, a discarded letter, a forgotten piece of jewelry. It was as if the house was a repository of memories, a vessel that held the fragments of those who had passed through its doors. As I stepped out onto the balcony, the sun began to set, casting a warm glow over the landscape. The old house seemed to sigh, its secrets drifting on the breeze, its stories whispered in the rustling leaves. I knew that I was just a visitor, a passerby in the grand tapestry of the house's history. But for a moment, as I stood there bathed in the fading light, I felt a connection, a bond with the past that transcended time and space. And as I turned to leave, I knew that the old house would forever remain a part of my own story, a memory that would linger like a whispered melody in the corners of my mind. The old hotel stood as a silent sentinel on the corner of a forgotten street, its grandeur and elegance a testament to a bygone era. The bricks that formed its walls bore the marks of time, their color mellowed by the sun and rain. Ivy crept up the sides, as if nature itself sought to reclaim the building, yet its presence only added to the hotel's enigmatic charm. I stepped through the heavy wooden doors, the air inside cool and laden with the scent of aged wood and polished brass. The lobby was a scene frozen in time, its marble floors gleaming under the soft light that filtered through antique chandeliers. The front desk stood as a relic of hospitality, its bell waiting to be rung by a hand that would never come. As I walked down the corridor, the carpet underfoot absorbed the sound of my footsteps, each step echoing with the history of countless guests who had passed this way before. The walls bore faded photographs, capturing moments of joy and celebration that seemed to linger in the air. I felt as if I was a guest in a grand mansion that had opened its doors to me, inviting me to uncover its secrets. I reached my room, and as I turned the key in the lock, a sense of anticipation settled over me. The door swung open, 
revealing a scene that was both familiar and foreign. The furnishings were a blend of old-world charm and modern comfort, creating an atmosphere that was both timeless and inviting. The curtains billowed gently, the soft breeze carrying whispers of stories that had unfolded within these walls. As night fell, I ventured into the hotel's restaurant, the soft glow of candlelight casting dancing shadows on the walls. The tables were set with care, the silverware gleaming under the dim light. I chose a seat by the window, the view framed by heavy velvet curtains that seemed to hold a thousand untold tales. The menu was a journey through culinary history, offering dishes that paid homage to the hotel's storied past. As I savored each bite, I imagined the conversations that had taken place in this very room. Business deals struck, romances kindled, secrets exchanged under the cover of whispered words. As I retired to my room, the hotel seemed to shift around me, the walls whispering of past lives and shared moments. The hallway was dim, the sconces casting elongated shadows that danced on the wallpaper. And then, as I walked past a closed door, a faint whisper reached my ears, a fragment of a conversation that was both distant and intimate. I hesitated, my curiosity peaked, and I pressed my ear against the door. The words grew clearer, a hushed argument, a plea for forgiveness, a promise that was never kept. It was as if the hotel itself held memories that were waiting to be heard, secrets that had been woven into its very fabric. The whisper faded, and I continued down the hallway, a sense of wonder and trepidation guiding my steps. The night was alive with the echoes of the past, the hotel a vessel that held the stories of those who had sought refuge within its walls. As I settled into bed, the sound of the wind outside seemed to carry with it the laughter and tears of generations. The old hotel was more than just a building. It was a keeper of memories, a guardian of dreams. And as I closed my eyes, I felt as if I was a part of its story, a fleeting chapter in a tale that would continue to unfold with each guest who walked through its doors. The rain beat down on the pavement, each drop a staccato rhythm that echoed the unease settling in my chest. It was a stormy night, the kind that makes you question your choices as you navigate through the darkness. But duty called, and I found myself behind the wheel, delivering food to a remote address that sent a shiver down my spine. The app's map guided me along winding roads that seemed to grow narrower with each turn. The branches of trees reached out like skeletal fingers, the shadows they cast dancing in the intermittent glow of the headlights. My heart raced as I approached a dilapidated house that loomed in the distance, its windows dark and unwelcoming. I parked the car and grabbed the food bag, my breath visible in the chilly air. As I approached the porch, a sense of unease settled over me, the feeling that I was being watched from the shadows. The porch light flickered, casting an eerie glow that seemed to distort the world around me. With a deep breath, I reached out and rang the doorbell, the sound reverberating through the silence. I waited, the seconds stretching into minutes, and just as I was about to turn and leave, the door creaked open. A figure stood before me, obscured by the shadows within. Food delivery, I said, my voice shaky despite my attempt at professionalism. The figure didn't move, and the silence between us grew heavy, pregnant with tension. Then, with a slow and deliberate motion, the door creaked wider, revealing the figure's face, a mask, its features distorted into a grotesque parody of humanity. My heart raced, and I fought the urge to step back, you're early, came a voice from behind the mask, a voice that held a strange blend of amusement and malice. My instincts screamed at me to leave, to abandon the delivery and flee into the safety of my car. But the rational part of my mind told me it was just a prank, a twisted game that someone was playing on a stormy night. I handed over the food bag, my fingers brushing against the gloved hand that emerged from the darkness. The hand took the bag and the door began to close with a slow, deliberate motion. Wait. I blurted out, my voice betraying my anxiety. Aren't you going to pay? The figure paused, the door hesitating in its movement. Then, with a rustling sound, a wad of bills emerged from a pocket in the figure's robe-like attire. The money was thrust towards me, and I took it with trembling hands, not daring to meet the masked gaze. As I turned to leave, a soft whisper followed me, a murmur of words that seemed to echo through the air. I couldn't quite make out the message, but the tone was ominous. A warning, perhaps, or a reminder of the darkness that surrounded me. I walked back to my car, my heart pounding in my chest. The rain had intensified. 
the downpour a torrential symphony that seemed to mask any other sounds. I glanced back at the house, the porch light flickering once before going out completely. The darkness swallowed the house whole, and a shiver ran down my spine. As I pulled away from the address, a feeling of relief washed over me. It was over, I told myself. Just a creepy encounter, nothing more. But deep down, a sense of unease lingered. A reminder that sometimes the most ordinary tasks could lead us into the realm of the unknown. The money I had been paid felt cold in my hand. A tangible reminder of the chilling encounter. And as I drove back through the winding roads, the stormy night seemed to stretch on forever. A canvas of shadows and secrets that I was eager to leave behind. Room 230 stood at the end of a dimly lit corridor, its door looming like a portal to the unknown. As I approached, a sense of foreboding settled over me, a feeling that the room held secrets far darker than its outward appearance suggested. The keycard slid into the slot with a hesitant click, and the door swung open to reveal a scene that sent a chill down my spine. The room was shrouded in shadow, the curtains drawn and the air heavy with an inexplicable coldness. The faint glow of a single lamp barely pierced the darkness, casting eerie shadows on the walls that seemed to dance to a rhythm all their own. I stepped inside, the door clicking shut behind me, and a feeling of isolation settled over me, as if I had been cut off from the world. The air seemed charged with an energy that was both oppressive and magnetic, a force that seemed to pull at the edges of reality. I moved through the room cautiously, my footsteps the only sound that broke the silence. The furnishings were ordinary. A bed, a desk, a chair. But there was something unsettling about their arrangement, as if they held a history that was waiting to be uncovered. As I approached the window, the curtains rustled softly, as if touched by an unseen hand. I pulled them back, revealing a view of the moonlit courtyard below. But the courtyard was empty, the statues and benches casting elongated shadows that seemed to reach out like specters seeking refuge. A sudden draft swept through the room, the curtains billowing as if stirred by an invisible presence. My gaze was drawn to the mirror that hung on the wall, its surface reflecting a scene that wasn't there. A figure, distorted and indistinct, standing just behind me. I turned, my heart racing, but there was nothing to be seen. Only the empty room bathed in the soft light of the lamp. With a shiver, I turned away from the mirror and moved towards the bed. But as I reached out to touch the covers, a voice a whisper that seemed to come from nowhere and everywhere at once, filled the air. The words were unintelligible, a garbled stream of sounds that sent a shiver down my spine. I spun around, my heart pounding, but the room was empty, the shadows undisturbed. I glanced at the clock on the bedside table, the hands ticking away the minutes with an almost mocking precision. The hours seemed to stretch and contract, as if time itself was warped within the confines of the room. A sensation of being watched settled over me, as if the walls themselves held eyes that followed my every move. With a sudden surge of determination, I moved towards the door, my footsteps quickening. But as I reached for the handle, a sensation, a touch, like a cold hand brushing against my skin, halted me in my tracks. I turned, my breath catching, and the lamp's glow seemed to flicker as if in response to my fear. And then... A figure, a shadow that seemed to materialize out of the darkness, its form contorted and elongated. It stood before me, a presence that seemed to defy the laws of nature, its features twisted into a grotesque mockery of humanity. I backed away, my heart racing, my mind unable to comprehend the impossibility before me. With each step I took, the figure advanced, its movement fluid and unnatural. I reached the window, my hands fumbling to pull back the curtains, and as the moonlight spilled into the room, the figure seemed to waver and then dissolve, disappearing into the shadows as if it had never been. I stumbled out of the room, my heart pounding in my chest, my breath coming in ragged gasps. The corridor outside felt like a sanctuary, a haven of light and reality in contrast to the nightmarish encounter I had just witnessed. Room 230 remained silent and closed, a portal to a world that was both terrifying and inexplicable. As I walked away, the sense of isolation lingered, the feeling that the room was a gateway to a reality that defied understanding. The memory of the figure's twisted form haunted me, a reminder that even the most ordinary of places could become a battleground between the known and the unknowable. 
A space where the shadows held secrets that could shatter the very fabric of perception. The bus station was a hub of activity, a transient realm where the ebb and flow of passengers created a rhythm that echoed the movement of life itself. The scent of diesel fuel hung in the air, blending with the chatter of voices and the mechanical hum of engines. As I stepped onto the platform, a sense of anticipation settled over me, a feeling that I was on the brink of a new adventure. People bustled around me, each lost in their own world, each with a story to tell. There were families embarking on vacations, commuters returning home after a long day's work, and solitary travelers seeking refuge in the anonymity of the crowd. The varied faces and languages painted a tapestry of humanity, a reminder that this bus station was a crossroads where paths converged and diverged. I found a seat near a window, my gaze fixed on the rows of buses lined up before me. Each one was a vessel of possibility, a vehicle that could transport me to new destinations and unfamiliar landscapes. The sunlight streamed through the glass, casting warm pools of light on the cold tile floor. As I watched, a bus pulled in, its doors hissing open with a pneumatic sigh. Passengers disembarked, their expressions a blend of weariness and relief. And then a mother and child stepped off, their reunion a heartwarming scene that unfolded in the midst of the bustling chaos. The child's laughter cut through the air like a beacon of innocence, a reminder that even in the midst of the mundane, there were moments of magic waiting to be discovered. Time seemed to blur as I sat there, lost in my thoughts and observations. The station was a microcosm of life's journey, a place where the stories of strangers intersected and overlapped, even if only for a fleeting moment. The clock on the wall ticked away the minutes, and the intercom crackled to life, announcing departures and arrivals with a static-laden voice. As the day shifted into evening, the station took on a different energy. The crowds began to thin, and the setting sun painted the sky in hues of pink and gold. The platform lights flickered to life, their glow casting a warm halo on the scene. And amid the changing landscape, I found myself lost in contemplation. A man sat down next to me, his face etched with lines that spoke of experience and wisdom. He glanced at the departing buses, his gaze distant, as if lost in memories of journeys taken long ago. His eyes held a quiet resignation, a recognition of the fleeting nature of life's passages. Traveling far? He asked, his voice a rumble that held a touch of nostalgia. I nodded, suddenly aware of the weight of the suitcase beside me. Yes, on to new horizons. He smiled, a wistful expression that seemed to hold a story of its own. Ah, the allure of the unknown. It never truly fades, does it? The sun had dipped below the horizon, and the stars began to twinkle in the darkening sky. The platform lights cast elongated shadows, creating a dreamscape of contrasts and illusions. I felt a sense of camaraderie with the man beside me, a shared understanding of the journeys we all undertake in search of meaning and adventure. As the night deepened, the station took on a quieter, more introspective quality. The arrivals and departures became less frequent, the voices softer, and the atmosphere more contemplative. It was as if the bus station itself was reflecting the introspection that often accompanies the night, a time when the world slows down and thoughts turn inward. I stood up, a sense of purpose guiding my steps. The bus that I had been waiting for had arrived, its doors open and waiting. As I climbed aboard, I glanced back at the man who nodded in acknowledgement. The doors closed with a mechanical hiss, and the bus pulled away from the station, merging into the flow of traffic. As the city lights faded into the distance, I thought of the bus station, the nexus of stories, the crossroads of lives. It was a place where people gathered in pursuit of their dreams and destinations, a place where the ordinary transformed into the extraordinary, if only for a fleeting moment. And as I looked out at the night sky, I knew that the memories of this place would forever be etched in my mind, a reminder of the connections we make and the journeys we embark upon in the tapestry of existence.